All right, guys, we're back. Happy Easter, everybody. We've got an emergency broadcast. We've got a really awesome episode planned. Um, got a lot of crypto news, a lot of political news to talk about. Um, and as always, guys, before we get started, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not political advice. I'm not trying to influence you any which way. I'm just covering the news and talking about what I think is the greatest financial asset in the history of mankind. So anyway, let's go ahead. Let's get straight into it, guys. Um, let's go ahead. And I want to start this episode by uh, going over to Bitcoin Havening Clock, uh, Bitcoin Havening Cycle. So if you follow this channel, a big part of my investing thesis is the Bitcoin Havening Cycle. So if you're somebody that's interested in crypto, I suggest doing a deep dive if you want to start anywhere to understand in the four year Bitcoin having in cycle because because we got about one year. We got about one year until uh, the Bitcoin having in occurs in which the block rewards for the Bitcoin miners will get cut in half. So historically, what this has done has led to a just insane Bitcoin price appreciation. Uh, leading up into the having in and uh, shortly, you know, for a time after the having in. And why that's important is because, uh, you know, if you follow these markets, uh, traditionally the alt the altcoins follow Bitcoin, meaning that if Bitcoin has an amazing week, an amazing month, historically alts follow it. Now that's not, you know, that's not saying that that's 100% going to happen this cycle. That's not saying that all alts will follow. That's not saying that, you know, alts won't, some alts won't go to zero, you know, even in a bull cycle. Obviously, guys, so that's why you need to do your own research. You need to make your own financial decisions. And um, you really need to you, you really need to understand Bitcoin. And then, you know, if there's one thing I could go back and do personally, I probably would have put a lot more money in Bitcoin and not fooled around with so many risky alts. Now, granted, granted, the alts are really where you can make the big money. Let, let's be honest. Historically, if we look back the last couple years, uh, people that made a lot of money in crypto made them in alts. They, they, you know, and it wasn't necessarily even that they were in good alts. They were just, it was timing. It was timing. They were in the right coins at the right time and they exited at the right time. So that's something you need to be thinking about too, guys. You know, as we look at this Bitcoin having cycle, don't make the mistake, you know, that I've made and a lot of investors make is that we get caught up in a bull market and we don't take profits and we just think everything's going to go up forever, which sometimes it does feel like it's going to do that. And if you do have a long-term mindset like me, you know, it's okay. It's okay. But um, this cycle, just always want to be uh, transparent with y'all. I'm going to be aggressively taking profits. You know, I'll do videos. I'll probably post it on Twitter, you know, whenever I sell or make a big buy. So definitely follow me on there. But um, so, yeah, guys, the Bitcoin having in cycle, super excited about this. Um, I, I personally think... I personally think that uh, the Bitcoin having cycle is going to be very similar to what what it was in other years uh, historically. So anyway, next uh, let's so let's look at Coin Market Cap, guys. Uh, you know it's Saturday. Bitcoin's sitting at twenty eight thousand. Ethereum right under nineteen hundred. Um, you know, pretty been trading sideways, guys. You know, again, we kind of thought we'd be in this range now. I'll say this, 28000 I actually thought was a little high. If you guys remember, I sold most of my Bitcoin at 25000 I wanted to take profits. We got in, what, at like eighteen, I believe? Set, uh, we got in at eighteen or nineteen. So I missed the bottom by a little bit, and I clearly missed the top by a little bit. But if I had to guess, and again, guys, Bitcoin is probably the hardest asset to really predict what its price is going to do. If I had to really guess, I think we're in for a, a, a dramatic correction and a, and a serious pullback. And I'm only saying that because um, because we've seen so much price appreciation. You know, Bitcoin from at not that long ago, sixteen thousand, all the way to twenty eight thousand. I think it's really just you know it's how markets move that uh, a, a strong correction and pullback is probably in order. Now I know there's a lot of people on Twitter that's saying that that's not going to happen. What they're saying is that uh, the collapse of all the banks that we're seeing, the devaluation of the dollar, that investors are looking for a safe haven. And believe it or not, believe it or not, you know, cash is not where invest a lot of investors are looking. A lot of investors are looking for alternatives to cash because of the de-dollarization of the uh, of the BRICS nation. So, so it's very complicated stuff, guys. So there's a lot of geopolitical stuff. You know, you really got to understand if you want to follow these markets because. Uh, we are in a very, very interesting time right now. You know, we're so used, you know, American dominance, USA number one, and the dollar being a world reserve currency. 
Well, I think for once, I'm not saying that the dollar isn't going to be the world reserve currency, but I think that that position is being threatened with the growth of these BRICS nations and the advent that they want to move to a gold-backed uh, stable coin, uh, so their own digital currency. Wild times, wild times, I know. What's going to happen next? I don't know. I don't know. All right, next story, guys. This was a wild story. This really was a wild story. This is on Yahoo Finance. Apple hiding a Bitcoin manifesto in Max, fueling theories that Steve Jobs was Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto is the creator of Bitcoin. The crypto's mysterious inventor. Uh, technologist Andy Bao wrote this week that he discovered a PDF of the original Bitcoin white paper on his Mac. The, rev the revelation fueled theories connecting Steve Jobs to the mysterious author of the paper, Satoshi Nakamoto. Bao said that Apple uh, appears to have hid the Bitcoin document in every copy of the Mac OS uh, since uh, 2018. So this guy hit, and again, guys, I do not think Steve Jobs is Satoshi Nakamoto. I, I think that's just, uh, uh, you know, clickbait. But I don't have any Apple products. So if anybody could verify, is there a copy of the Bitcoin white paper in your Apple products? If you don't know what the Bitcoin white paper is, that's just like the blueprint for Bitcoin. It's, you know, what the developers created to describe how Bitcoin works. So just think of it as like the blueprint. Now, why that's interesting, why that's, you know, one of the top stories I want to talk about today is, is for a simple reason. For, if this is true, if this is true and Apple put, you know, the Bitcoin white paper has been every Mac OS version since 2018. If Apple really did this, and it's still unclear to why Apple embedded the Bitcoin white paper in the Mac OS version, this is why this is interesting. Check this out from Investopedia. Cash is king. For Apple, a strong cash position is a major strength. The company holds cash and cash equivalents of, thir of almost $35 billion. So Apple holds about $35 billion in cash on its publicly disclosed balance sheet. And it holds about $27.79 billion in marketable securities. I believe, you know, that's just uh, stocks and uh, bonds uh, that can be easily be converted into cash. It also has a non-current market securities of $127.88 uh, billion. So let's just use the $35 billion for, let's use the $35 billion. We know inflation's here. We know the Fed is telling us it's around 6 you know, 7%, something like that. So if you're Apple... You know, it's not just one person that has to make this decision. It's not just the CEO. They have shareholders that they have to answer to. So if you Apple shareholders and Apple's holding this considerable amount of cash and, the, you know, you're a shareholder and that cash is being devalued by inflation, it's being, you know, it's decreasing because of inflation, wouldn't it make sense to allocate a small amount. I'm not saying put the whole $35 billion in Bitcoin. That's not what I'm saying, even though that's probably what Michael Saylor and MicroStrategy would do. I'm saying that if you allocate it, say, $1 billion of it, $2 billion of it, do you guys realize the headlines? Do you realize what Bitcoin price would do? So I'm just trying to connect dots that maybe aren't there. Maybe I'm reaching. Let me know in the comments if you think this is a reach. But if... Uh, if somebody at Apple, uh, you know, whoever it was, the devs are putting the Bitcoin white paper. So clearly they're, they're, they're pro Bitcoin. I doubt they'd be putting the Bitcoin white paper in there if they didn't like it. So it's not that far of a stretch. And we've seen, you know, Tesla, you know, publicly traded company, MicroStrategy, we see these publicly traded companies add Bitcoin to its balance sheet. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Apple do it. Um, you know, it, it just kind of would make sense. And if it was going to happen, It'll probably happen shortly because of the Bitcoin halving cycle. So if there's somebody that's reading the Bitcoin white paper and they're into Bitcoin, then they'd want to add Bitcoin now while inflation is ravaging their their uh, their cash on hand, right? So I don't know. Let me know in the comments about that, guys. So I just thought this was a really interesting story. Um, next story. U.S. Senate is pushing to ban crypto wallets. Uh, cryptocurrency has been a controversial topic. So, yeah, guys, so it's Elizabeth Warren. And, guys, they are hell-bent. They are hell-bent at coming after crypto. Um, it's not just the Democrats, guys. You know, Republicans, you know, basically the way I look at it, most of your politicians, most of right and left, truly don't understand this technology they, they don't understand it um they have biases against it and a lot of times they are manipulated by lobbyists their campaign donors and essentially do, guys just people people pulling the strings behind the scenes 
people pulling a, you know, the central banks control a lot of the world, whether you want to believe that or not. And this technology is a direct threat to the central banks. This technology is a, a direct threat to tyranny. This technology is a, a, a direct threat to anybody that's anti-freedom. So I do think that, you know, uh, it's very real concern. That's why a lot of people don't get into crypto because they think the government's going to ban it. Well, I'll tell you this. Bitcoin's been around, what, 12 years now? If they wanted to ban it, if they could ban it, it ought to be banned. I do not think they can ban it. You know, we've covered extensively. The SEC has classified Bitcoin as a commodity. So it's in the same asset class as gold. Now, now, all your altcoins, that I do not know. I'm not saying they're going to ban them. I'm not saying they can ban them. But it, th these attacks from the right and the left, you're going to be seeing a lot of. So, uh, and, and this is why, if you're wondering why, check this out. Christine Lagarde, uh, Bad News Bears. This chick's Bad News Bears. Uh, with CBDCs, we'll, we will have control. She said in a meeting with Zelensky. So CBDC will be used for control. ECB president admits in a vid chat with fake Zelensky. So let me tell you what happened. So these prank dudes pretended to be uh, the Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky. And they called Christine Lagarde and they were talking about the central bank digital currencies. And they were talking about how they can be used to control the populace. This is a very frightening thing because think about it, guys. Let's use the polarization of the United States, for example. You have the right and you have the left. You have you have division. You have, uh, you know, the, if you're on the right, you're going to say the left is, is tyrannical and taking away freedoms. If you're on the left, you're going to say the right is tyrannical and taking away your freedoms. Do you want these powers that be, right or left, to control your money? Really think about that. So it's not about... It's not about do you like the orange man. It's not about do you like Joe Biden or Elizabeth Warren. It's not a right versus left thing. It's that we don't want our, our money to be uh, to, to be in the control of these bureaucrats. I mean, that's not that's really not too crazy to say. And I think that's something that the general populace could mostly agree on. That's one thing that, that we can agree on. That is why me politically, I'm only going to support uh, pro crypto candidates, pro Bitcoin candidates, especially uh, fed now enables government surveillance while Bitcoin protects privacy. Yeah, guys. So with Bitcoin, there's no middleman. There's no middleman. There's no intermediary. There's nobody that can freeze your Bitcoin account. They can't take your Bitcoin for for you know saying for not going along with the current thing. So this is a, it's just something new, guys. It's a new system, and this frankly terrifies terrifies the powers that be. Which you know I'm all for. I'm all for guys. I'm all for power to the people. Seriously. All right. Uh, so Federal Reserve to launch instant payment service Fed now in July. All right. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know too much about this Fed now uh, system that that's that's coming out in July that they're rolling out. I believe in some type of beta test, but from what I'm reading, this is the precursor to the central bank digital currency. And you know, we're seeing a lot of states get ahead of this: Florida, Texas, I believe maybe Missouri, a few of the other ones. You know, they're banning, they're trying to ban these central bank digital currencies because, I, again, I don't think money should be politicized. I don't think that you know your bank account should be used, you know, to go against uh, dissidents of any government, no matter your no matter your political viewpoints. Uh, check this out, guys: Arkansas and Senate pass bill protecting right to mine Bitcoin goes to governor for approval. So another state protecting our rights to mine Bitcoin. So I want you to put this in perspective. Uh, you know, the states govern themselves, you know, so the, you have you have the federal, you have the Fed, you have, you know, state and, you know, the Fed does trump the state laws, but the states govern themselves. So as long as there's no breach in the Constitution and you know, I don't think mining Bitcoin is anywhere of a breach of, you know, your constitutional rights. So as long as these states have this legislation in place and it's you know smart to get ahead of it early think about it bitcoin will always exist so there'll be some guy if there's one guy on a farm in arkansas mining bitcoin the network exists it's not going anywhere you guys think michael saylor is going to sell his billions of dollars of bitcoin at a loss absolutely not guys that this is just the beginning and it's just crazy watching this happen now uh, check out this story. Uh, BRICS world currency takeover. Is this the end of traditional money? A new world currency can improve cross-border transactions, financial access, addressing security, stability, and regulatory challenges is vital for the new currency's long-term global impact. So 
I don't know, guys. I, I don't know what's going to happen with this BRICS currency. I, I don't know what the United States is going to do to combat this. I don't know if the United States even views this as a threat. I don't know if the United States is going to try to partner with this. I, I really don't know. I really don't know. I'll say this, that um, I think it's probably bad for the dollar. I think it's, you know, it's probably bad for the dollar's uh, status as world reserve currency because if, you know, uh, Brazil, you know, United States is the largest economy in the world, but Brazil's a very large economy. Russia's a very large economy. China's a very emerging economy. So if these emerging and growing economies uh, are all transacting and, and, you know, other countries are getting off the petrodollar and these countries are transacting in a gold back, a gold back stable coin. So a, a currency that is backed by physical gold utilizing blockchain technology as a ledger to, you know, to make sure that it's audible that way that you're not just endlessly printing money. So you can see these gold reserves or back in your money. That's investors are going to want that investors are going to want that. That's sound money. That, that That's some of the principles of sound money. It's scarce. It's backed by something. So United States better pay attention guys. You know, uh, your federal reserve is really falling behind. Um, Check this out. Uh, DeSantis and RFK Jr. misconstrue Fed's digital plans and warnings of government overreach. So it is seeding the power of our financial freedom to a central bank, which does not have our interests at heart, Ron DeSantis said. Wow. So, um, again, you guys, you know, no matter your political views, uh, CBDCs, I do not think are good. And I think that, you know, the weaponization of the right and the left, you know, it, it, it's going to be used. They're going to go after people going to go after people that you know stand up against the government and government overreach and you know the the freedom loving community is going to gravitate toward a decentralized economy they're going to gravitate gravi- gravitate uh toward bitcoin all right let's change gears a little bit guys uh new york post let's talk a little bit about ai uh pause in u.s development ai would simply benefit china ex google boss eric schmidt warned so that's coming off uh the news of elon musk who co-founded AI? Uh, who co-founded firm behind Chat GBT. Did y'all know that that uh, Elon Musk was a co-founder in the Chat GBT AI? He warns that AI is one of the biggest risks to civilization. Um, Bill Gates replied to that. Uh, Elon Musk wants to pause dangerous AI development. Bill Gates disagrees, and he's not the only one. So what they are saying is that. And again, guys, I'm going to kind of trust the people that created the AI, you know, Elon Musk having a big part in the development of AI, that there's no there's no government bodies, there's there's no referees, there, there's no oversight in the development of AI, and it's growing so fast and becoming so powerful. So, and I know, you know, a lot of you are thinking like, man, but how, you know, so what? That, that's good for, for, for civilization, right? We have AI, it's going to make our lives easier, it's going to, you know, help us with so much stuff. Well... Not necessarily, because the AI in the wrong hands, and what they're alluding to is the CCP, that they're not going to follow the same rules. They, 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 you know, the CCP, and not just them, other communist nations, they're going to use the AI for any kind of nefarious purposes, and it might be nefarious purposes that maybe we can't really see right now. We won't know the effects that it can do, the damage that it can do, so after because this is very very new technology and you know when elon musk says that this technology is is uh, more dangerous than nuke nuclear warfare i'm gonna pay attention so should the ai development be paused well frankly i, I don't think there's a way to do that i think that the pandora is kind of out the box i think that you know establishing some type of um common sense g- government oversight i think you know having international panels to really monitor what's going on, you know, the same way we do, you know, we have, you know, councils that, you know, make sure countries aren't developing bioweapons or, or uh, dirty bombs. I think that uh, that would be something that, that would just be common sense because the AI in the wrong hands, I'm telling you guys, watch, let, let, me, let me show you this article. Let me show you this article. So this is, uh, this is from General Flynn's website, and I know maybe some of you aren't too big of a fan of General Flynn. Uh, he was a three-star military general under, uh, under Donald Trump. Uh, he was arrested by the Biden administration. But this is what he said, and guys, he's a military general. Uh, general Flynn, you know, 
he's very, you know, General Flynn's actually a military general that warned not just the Obama administration, uh, but warned all of our government about the CCP's plans and the danger that the CCP poses to, to the world, essentially to the world. And General Flynn talked to a lot of uh, defectors from, from, from the CCP, military generals, and they broke down China's 100-year plan. And part of that plan involved AI. And check out what he said. Uh, this is the most effective weapon of the digital age. Fifth generation warfare emphasizing non-physical dimensions such as cyber and information warfare to achieve strategic objectives. In this context, AI-driven psychological programming becomes the perfect weapon. It allows foreign actors to infiltrate the, the, the uh, target nation's digital sphere and exploits vulnerabilities to achieve their goals by manipulating social media spreading disinformation, and employing micro-targeting techniques, adversaries can subtly shape public discourse and opinion without even setting foot on the battlefield. Wow. So, guys, we hear a lot about election battling. We hear about Russian interference in our elections. We hear so much of this rhetoric. And I think, you know, for a lot of you, you know, just common folk, like, what, how is how is how are foreign countries interfering in our elections? This doesn't make any sense. Well, they're using technology that you've probably never experienced before, and you probably I don't even really understand the magnitude of what it can do. So they're using this AI technology, and guys, this is a military general telling us this. So we know right now tensions are very high with Russia. We know tensions are very high with North Korea. We know tensions are very high with, it seems like damn near everybody. It seems like the, the United States is having problems with damn near everybody. So now there's a new and emerging technology that the United States may not be the most equipped to defend itself from, you know, the, or, or the American people. So something to be aware of, guys. Again, I, I think AI can be a positive, but it needs to be monitored. All right. Super, super bullish story, guys. Check this out. Bullish for Bitcoin. These financial giants buy $75 million in micro, stra uh, micro strategy shares. So as we know, micro strategies, uh, the first public trade company to buy Bitcoin, they have like billions of dollars of Bitcoin on their balance sheet. So if you're an investor and you, you don't want to buy Bitcoin directly, as a proxy to Bitcoin, you can buy micro strategy stock because if Bitcoin does well, Micro strategy in turn will do well because they hold so much Bitcoin and balance sheet. And what some investors believe is that let's say let's say Bitcoin has a week where Bitcoin's up twenty five percent on a week, right? So Bitcoin has an amazing week. What some investors uh, theory is, and, and a lot of times this can be true. So Bitcoin's up twenty five percent a week. Micro strategies might be up thirty percent on a week. So as you're, you're buying this stock as a proxy to Bitcoin. And it may actually outperform the actual asset of Bitcoin because the stock market is is crazy, guys. You guys know that. So, um, but l let's look at these companies that that are getting exposure to micro strategies: Vanguard, BlackRock, Bank of America. I don't know who this is. I don't know who these are. Morgan Stanley, guys. Vanguard, BlackRock. Do you guys realize? Vanguard and BlackRock hold most of the retirement funds of the United States. So why would these giant wealth funds be investing this kind of money in a Bitcoin company if this technology was going to be banned? Now, look, I don't know everything, guys. I live in my mom's garage. I, I make a YouTube channel about crypto, but I'm pretty good at seeing trends and I'm pretty seeing at what's coming next. And I think I've got a pretty good understanding of this technology that it's not going anywhere. We're going into the fourth industrial revolution, whether you like it or not. I suggest that you guys learn about the World Economic Forum. Read what Klaus Schwab and, and, and our friends at the WF are talking about because we're going into a digital age. They've The Fed has made it clear. They want to get rid of money. They want to get rid of cash. Now me, I'm pro-Bitcoin. I'm pro cash too. I'm pro the American dollar. I want the dollar to be the world reserve currency. But I do agree that a, a system where Bitcoin is the world reserve currency is technically a fair system. Because think about it. Why should your dollar be any stronger than somebody in another country? Meaning that why should someone have to suffer, suffer economic hardship for you to have stronger money? Shouldn't everybody have the same money? 
one Bitcoin is equal to one Bitcoin everywhere in the world. This is just a fair system. It's a more equitable system. And that scares people. That scares people. It scares especially people with money. But what this is telling me that the look, I'm not a fan of BlackRock. <laughs> you guys know that. I'm not a fan of BlackRock. I think, I think they're the bad guys. You know, you guys see the protest in France right now? Massive protests in, in France at the BlackRock facility happening right now. That tells you that the people are fed up. The people are fed up of these giant conglomerates, these giant corporations having so much power over our financial sovereignty. So when I see that these 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 entities buying Bitcoin, that tells me they know they can't stop it. So what are they going to do? They're going to try to buy it all up. The rich get richer. This is the story. Think about it. This is the story of history. The poor get smashed, the middle class gets smashed in a serfdom, and the rich get richer. The rich acquire wealth, and how do they do it? They use the media. They use the media. They use the talking heads. They use fear, uncertainty, and doubt to get people out of crypto. They use government officials and bureaucrats to attack this technology so that the average public thinks it's not going to be here. They sell their assets at a loss, and the black rocks of the world buy it all up. Yeah, sounds wild. I know, I know. Check out this story, guys. Russia becomes the second most powerful Bitcoin miner in the world. Wow. So <sighs> let's think about this from a let's you, from the United States' standpoint. The United States hates Russia. We're beefing with Russia right now. That's no secret. Russia's out of the World Economic Forum. Russia's the bad boys of the world. You guys are going to let Russia become an economic superpower and be the biggest Bitcoin miner in the world, the second largest in the world. You're cool with that. You're, you, so, so Russia's the bad guys. You're going to let Russia become an economic superpower. Guys, hello, America first. Imagine we bring Bitcoin mining here. You know, Texas is already doing it. Texas is probably, I think, further ahead than most states. A lot of states like New York are banning it because of the environment. I'm trying to explain to you we all live in the same environment. So whether Russia's mining it, China's mining it, whoever's mining it, it's the same environment. So we need to mine it here. We need to find green, renewable ways to mine Bitcoin. When companies realize they have a financial incentive to mine this stuff with renewable energy that's good for the environment, this is going to revolutionize green energy, meaning that progress will be made in, 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 you know, whether it's solar, whether it's wind, whether it's, you know, uh, water turbines, whether it's uh, wh whatever type of mining it is, that technology is going to grow at such a great pace because if people know there's a profit incentive, that's capitalism. That's one of the benefits of capitalism is that it's going to make people with great ideas, that's the American dream, American ingenuity, come out and find ways to mine Bitcoin. Awesome. But, but, you know, let, let's let Russia become the world superpower. Let's let Russia and China. Yeah. All right, guys. Last story. Last story. You from Reuters. U.S. IRS to hire nearly 20,000 staff over two years with $80 billion in new funds. So the IRS is looking to hire a bunch of new agents. Guys, I don't know about y'all. I love the IRS. I love paying taxes. <laughs> I just paid my taxes and wow, wow. You know, it, 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 it's it's really crazy to me, guys, because when you see this, when you see this, some people, you know, think like, oh, so what? So what? You know, everybody needs to pay their fair share. Is that the same? Pay their fair share? Well, well I don't know about you guys, but I know I, I, I don't pay my fair share. I pay over my fair share. And I know a lot of you are very hardworking and, you know, between inflation, which is like, you know, its own tax. Inflation's technically like a tax in my eyes. You know, because you're paying for wars overseas. That's what inflation is. You're actually paying for the tyrannical Fed to fund wars overseas that you don't agree with. So they're hiring these IRS agents. And here's my thought. Here's my thought. Do you think the IRS agents are going after Bill Gates? Do you think the IRS agents are going after Elon Musk? Do you think the IRS agents are going after Donald Trump who paid zero dollars in federal taxes? Do, do, do you guys think that they're going after these people? No. No. Because the rich do not pay taxes. The rich 
they created the system. The banking, the, the central bank, they created the system. The politicians create the system. And they know all the loopholes, a lot of it through real estate, a lot of it through starting businesses at a loss, all kind of crazy tax loopholes that the average people don't know about. So, so who these IRS agents are going after? They're going after your hairdressers that you know take Venmo. They're going after your grass guys. They're going after the little guys. And why that's, that's tyrannically insane is because think about this. Our government does not have a revenue problem. Our government has a spending problem. Our government spends more money than it takes in. So by taxing little guys, it's not going to do anything. You could raise the tax rate on the middle class. We pay most of the taxes anyway. It's not going to change anything. We need to cut our spending. So we don't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem. So again, if, if they were saying, hey, look, these IRS agents, they're going to go after these uh, people hiding money offshore in offshore accounts. They're going after Bill Gates. They're going after Elon Musk. They're going after Jeffrey Epstein's, uh, you know, they're going after them. I'd be all for it. I'd be all for it. But... Why don't we need to defund the IRS? You know, a lot of talk about defunding the police. What about defund the IRS? Because I don't know about you guys, paying taxes, hey, it's part of life. We can't get around it. It sucks. It sucks. But pay your taxes, especially crypto taxes, because they're coming for you. They're coming for you. So don't think that, you know, this cycle, you know, and, and I, I will try to bring some tax professionals on, you know, to, to show you guys what's the legal, smart ways to you know, to deal with the IRS, you know, I suggest not, not financial advice. Uh, I suggest getting a CPA guys. I suggest getting a CPA. I think, you know, if you, if you know, if you made it this far in the video guys, thank you so much for watching. I think that this next cycle is going to be really, really kind to us. So this is stuff that you got to start thinking about guys. I have a CPA. Um, I think that you should start at least looking at for a CPA, specifically somebody that knows a lot about crypto about crypto investing so you can not only you know pay pay your fair share pay your taxes but so that you can do what's in the best interest of your because you're creating generational wealth so this, this is kind of it's one of the necessary evils as i like to call it so uh get you a good attorney get you a good cpa uh learn learn the tax law learn the tax law because guys if the orange man don't got to pay taxes i don't think you should have to pay taxes either i'm serious when i say that if the elites don't have to pay taxes, then why do we? Why do we? Anyway, guys, made it far in, this far in the video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, crazy world right now, guys. Just have faith. Keep your heads up. Um, me, I, I'm DCA and into these markets. Looking for a re-entry point in Bitcoin. I'll keep y'all updated. Anyway, y'all, have a great weekend. Happy Easter, y'all. I'm out. Peace.